Andrew um, and we've got our Amal Euros 41 for sale this one here which I'm going to show you around um, we hadn't planned on doing a YouTube video but because we've had a, quite a few people uh, contact us and ask for pictures and their, their videos they want we thought we'll try it and remember and collate it all together and then have it in one place um, at the time of talking and apologies for the glasses um, this is November 2020, so fantastic Corona second wave. So those that have been interested largely haven't been able to make it here. Um, now, I'll update the adverts where I can with a link to YouTube. Uh, some of them won't allow it. And some adverts will probably come live next year, say a Polo Duck or something, when people are able to travel. But as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words and the things um, we've written in the advert, I think it's worth pointing out just to make it very clear and transparent. The boat at the time of talking at the moment is up for 20,000 euros, which for an Amal Euros, that's I think very, very well priced. Um, in good order, these are advertised 35 to 40,000 sometimes. Um, I've never been and sat on one to compare it, but I can't imagine ours is 15, 20,000 euros worse. So let me show you anyway. The first thing, the bad. It's on the advert, Rach, if you come in. This side's probably easier to see. You can see the patches on the stern, and this carries on around the hull. The original colour you can see, or the patchy colour, um, that's the gel coat. That's the Amel gel coat, the cream, and I don't know the code. Um, this white colour, which is flaking off, was done five years ago in the Caribbean. Um, they must have charged a good price, because it's the Caribbean, um, but they didn't key the uh, gel coat, hence it's just been peeling off. And if actually, if you just show around the other side, Rach, you'll see there's, there's another flake ready to come off. Just down there. So that's been happening all summer. It's only cosmetic, but it might put people off. And if it does, this isn't the boat for you. you buy, if you're interested in this, it's a 20,000 euro ammo. It's not 40,000 completed, perfect boat. But every boat, and bearing in mind this is 44 years old in 1976, every boat, whether it's five years old or 50 plus, will need work. This is purely cosmetic. Now we had planned when we lift next year, if we haven't sold it, then we'll actually paint this anyway, roll tip bit, not spray, because I'm not paying 5,000 euros to spray. Um, the next thing which you can't see, because I'm not diving in the water at this temperature, is the hull. It needs lifting, scraping, anti-fouling, um, it's a job to be done, um, but so it is mostly every two years. I wouldn't personally copper coat this, but hey, if you want to spend 10,000 I think it is roughly for copper coating on a boat of this size, be my guest. Otherwise you're looking at lifting every two years in a country like this anyway. So, let's move on. Um, navigation lights are LED. We've got a Honda 2 horsepower outboard uh, with the tender that <laughs> is a bit of a novelty. We'll show it you at the end when we go down to the quay. Uh, we've taken it away from the stern here in case of, uh, with this has been on a winter mooring, just in case the boat moves back from winds, etc. Um, solar panels, we have two. Um, I think one is 130 watt, one is 150 watt, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, we have an air breeze uh, wind generator, which isn't connected at the moment. Yes, it's physically standing there, but the wires, since I did some modifications, I haven't reconnected it. As you can see, the blades which are replaced, uh, they're currently tied up. Um, in all summer, we've not needed more than the solar panels, so I didn't see the point in wearing that thing out for excess voltage that we didn't require. Um, come on, pass the rail. Oh, mooring ropes, spring mooring lines, of course, there. Uh, we have lots of extra ropes, mooring lines, older and new halyards, uh, floating lines, tree line, I think you maybe call it. Um, but we haven't used most of them, to be honest. What, what's actually in place here on the boat now is all we've needed to use for last winter, this summer, and where we've just uh, currently moored up for winter. So. sails a common question these crossed the Caribbean five years ago um, then the owner at the time a, a, an elderly chap now he's elderly uh, he took them down stored them away and he didn't use them until we put them back on last year for a test sail so they crossed the Atlantic they would cross the Atlantic again they're not new sails but as a, a friend of ours who's a sail maker and repairer she says if, it, if they're not tearing and they're not worn unless you're racing there's no need to change them 
So, as you can see, you know, there's we've had to uh, wait for the right day, hence the slight delay in filming this, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I I'm not an expert. This is my first proper big boat, but this is maybe, you know, used but usable. That's how I think it was described as to me. Um, moving forward, um, we've got lots of rigging on an AML, or AML, if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, you've got two baby stays here, halfway up. Your cap shrouds, um, as you can see at the top there, the radar flex is wobbling, so it's showing it's still attached anyway. Um, we haven't changed this rigging. With the size of this sail, it wouldn't cost a lot of money, probably about 600 euros to do it yourself if you wanted to, but I just don't see the point. It's such a small sail. If anything was starting to look like it kept, was coming away, drop the sail and change that one or all of it if you want. But at the moment, they're in good order, so I personally wouldn't spend the money on that. Your choice. Um, Moving forward, um, we've been asked about winches, yes. Old-fashioned um, Lumars, non-self-tailing, but again, with the size of our sails and equipment, it's all manageable by one hand. It's, it's, you don't need, um, you don't, you don't need self-tailing large winches on a, on a boat of this configuration. Um, where did we put the handle? Ah. So, two speed. You get that and then you get that and both working i recently took them off and greased them so you should be good for next season or more um so we were asked about uh, like the plates for the rigging and so on so basically it's all of this condition there's no crazy cracking all around um it's the, i mean there's lots of points for the rigging here because there is a lot of rigging but it's all of this standard um let me just think what else. Um, we have the railings, which is a typical ML feature uh, with the solid top bar. People class this as a safety rail. They never should be, but you can sometimes just lean your leg on it as you're walking around and it is nice to have something solid. Um, but that's a typically ML feature, I believe. Um, other solar panel, the larger one. Again, I think this is the 150. To be honest, I'm not bothering to take this off to have a look. It's enough for what we need, so I've not bothered changing it. Um, okay, small stuff, new topping lift. We've got a new Halyard green one at the front, which to be honest, since fitting, we've hardly need to use, except for when we've gone up the mast in the bosun's chair. Uh, I'll leave this permanently attached. It's a preventer just for when we do goose wing going downwind. So, um, what else have we got? engine we'll come back to in a minute moving forward uh, fuel taps down here one each side uh, this is 100 liters the other is 150 I think on the Maramoos Super Maramoos don't quote me those those of you that are um, specialists on this but this seems to have more of the older uh, protections you know it's it's got four pieces that's all the way around uh, on our friends I think it's a Super Maramoo he seems to have less of this and it's more of a bimini anyway point being if you do get some winds and you get some rain coming at you it gives you a decent amount of protection um, mainsail um, niggles we've got here, and it's minuscule, I would have fixed this, but tiny little hole there, which is, as you can see, there was previously, it's been uh, tapped, uh, patched, sorry, again and again, little one there, I can see a little one there, and that's, those are the last ones I can, oh, maybe just one there as well. So with some sail tape, you've got years left in these, in these uh, sails. Again, similar sort of, uh, probably aged to the mizzen, see there's a you know a little bit baggy but when we went to um, a place called Venitsa um, a few weeks ago we were doing seven knots we had seven knots um, on the stern so that wasn't the mizzen that was just the main uh, and the foresail and then as we were going on a starboard tack we were still doing seven knots for a boat that's eight ton with sails maybe of this age I don't know if it would get much faster with newer sails I think that's good personally um, okay, what else have we got? Um, the main on this, it's uh, the halyard is on a cable, so I don't even know if you call it a halyard actually, but anyway, what hoists the main sail is a cable, which I've been told is a good thing to have. Um, 
let me just think off the top of my head here we have um just some stainless ladders basically just for when you're going swimming or going into the sea and having to get back out we have got the steps at the back but to be honest i think if we were to lift we'd take them off and just stick with these to be honest uh, this is actually a sail kit this gray bag what was probably blue once upon a time but uh, that's a sail kit for the tender and again we'll show you the tender on a separate video because it's um it's quite entertaining to see it's a bit of a classic uh usual hooks we've got a couple of them fishing rod and some oars yes they're not strapped down but where we are at the moment with the winds we don't need to um so again uh, talking more about rigging similar format to the mizzen so we have two baby stays cap shroud uh full stay we have a stay sail here which isn't currently attached but it's very easy to attach and i don't know if it's an ml feature but basically there's a bracket which i can show is you basically hook it in here uh, and you attach it to this t-piece here and it takes two minutes it's well not even two minutes two seconds it's a quick lock system um, reason we don't have it up is with the three sails it's enough we don't need a fourth we have tried it with the uh, we've got a storm sail below and we've um oh God, what do you call it hanked it is it called you know we just hoist it without um a, um a reel sorry a reel can't remember the term anyway but basically we hoisted the storm sail and tested it yeah it works but we don't have a lot of storms around here thankfully bar the medicaid not long ago uh, <laughs> What else? Uh, spinnaker pole here. Uh, that's where Amel actually left it. I don't know why they didn't manage to put it on the main mast vertically, but this is as per the brochure as well. It's where they stored it. Never used it, I'll be honest, um, but it's there. And we've got the spinnaker as well, uh, which is, I think, in a lot newer condition than the main sails. So, um, right, we leave this locker open. Might look a little untidy, but we leave it open just in case because of all these blue blue clouds we've got here uh, we don't thankfully get a lot of rain at the moment but when we do it'll just help wash it out so we have when we put the anchor out we're on a claw as well just to ease off on the chain um, just gloves and bits and pieces but this is actually new 8 mil chain from this summer which we got from waypoint uh, there's 60 meters of that um, and then we've got 70 meters of this it's actually very good quality chain from america but it's i believe from my research triple b chain meaning it won't fit on this gypsy very well so this this here it won't fit on i've tried about 15 of them this triple b is an american imperial fitting and everybody now in the european waters uses metric so it'll be 8 mil 10 mil 12 mil 6 mil but not 3b and i think if this is 3b chain it's also classed and non-calibrated so there's a difference between when you use a windlass when it's calibrated or not you use calibrated chain for a windlass however because we're liverboards and you definitely number one rule is don't throw anything away in the first year of you being on a new boat because you haven't got a clue if you need it or not that chain there even though it's weight and my friend hates it he tells me i should throw it overboard if we were ever in a place where we needed to at least have a spare anchor out or extend the chain we've got we can we could utilize this so i'd be very loath to throw it away personally um much to his annoyance i'll be honest um what else we got oh i'll just feed into here i'll show you the cockpit area as well with the engine in a bit more detail but generally because there's two of us we we use this uh, windless remote when we're uh, setting anchor weighing anchor whichever um, i tend to do the anchor work and rach who's holding the camera she tends to do the uh, the helm in there so uh, what i can't show you because we're on lazy lines yay <laughs> and two of them to note um i can't show you in here um but it's very simple uh, we've got a large delta there it is a large one and it's seen us through some pretty tasty winds uh, i can't give you the poundage because i'm i'm not even sure if it's original or copy but it, to me it's got exactly the same copy as, as the delta either which way is heavy very heavy um we have another one which used to be on the boat in here which is a step down of one or two sizes i'm not sure again the weight but at the moment we're not getting rid of it maybe sometime we would We've also got the dam forth, which is the flip-flop anchor. Um, we have a little 
spare uh, dinky anchor, which is nothing, and also a catch, which is an aluminium two-piece, which you bolt together with a bolt. It's got nine meters of warp and 12 meters of stainless chain. Because we never go bow to, we always go stern to, uh, we haven't used the catch. So it's for those that know how to or need to or want to. Um, anything else up here? Ah, right, so, um, I say, uh, sorry, I said, um, four stay was replaced. This wasn't by us, it was by Jeff in the last five years or so. Uh, and it's the, um, where am I looking now? Yeah, it's, I, yeah, it's the type, um, like a Norseman or Staylock or something style fitting, but that was done by Jeff. Um, again, because we're on twin lazy lines, we would normally have this stopper here with the chain, uh, with the anchor out, with the claw as well. Uh, we don't just put it all on that, we put it on the claw first, around the cleat, with this as a real emergency backstop. Uh, bizarrely, when we bought the boat, this had 6mm rope, which is this thickness here, if you can see. Um, which is a bit like cheese wire when the winds pick up. So our friends rightly suggested we change the pulleys, of which we have lots on the boat, plus other things, uh, and we bought some 10mm, and it makes the job a lot easier to bring in. Believe me, if you're trying to uh, pull the, uh, the foresail in or Genoa in when you've got winds and you're facing the wrong way, you'll still find it difficult. But at least with a 10mm rope, you've got a good grip. Um, right, one chap definitely wanted to see the foresail, so I'll hoist it on that side. Yeah, then we can just uh, run up and down it. You might have to help me feed it round or, you know, because there's no wind to pull it out. Let me just. Oh, water fill point as well here. 470 litres on the water side. So if you just come down past me, Rich. Um, for sale, I think in very good condition. There is what looks to be a big patch on that sort of two thirds of the way up, but I think that's just for catch rail protection. I think that was put in there on purpose for exactly that reason. We do have end caps on the catch rounds, but um, yeah, I think that's just extra protection. Uh, the usual telltales on it. And uh, yeah, it's in good order. It's a carrot sale, by the way, if that means anything to anyone, not me. But. Uh, and I don't know if I skipped past it when I was talking about the rigging again. So as I said, four sail have been done. We've replaced the two cap shrouds, which are these outer ones. And we've done the two running, uh, not running back, uh, the two backstays, not running backstays. Um, which are the two cables going there on the aft, if you run, if you run down anyway. Uh, it's actually the plate we were showing earlier on on the video. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, the only bits that haven't been done on the main are these two both sides, which is the baby stays. I'm personally looking at them, they're 8 mil, I think. I wouldn't bother changing them. Again, unless you see some degradation, I think it'd be wasted money at this point. But if you do need to, or you need to go up the mast as well, we've got steps all the way up, which is fantastic. So when we do go up, we use the steps plus bosun's chair, plus the cable, plus a halyard. So, if we were to fall, touch wood, we wouldn't. Um, right, shall we move on to the engine? So, uh, in the cockpit now, um, LED light out here, all of these which are around have all been changed to LEDs for what that's worth, uh, which certainly saves a lot of electric anyway. Uh, we have um, Oculus, is it? Oh, Osculati, sorry. Um, windless remote which is what i use so i generally do the backing up on the key so as we're backing up then i'll deploy using that and then rach is at the uh, stern with lines ready to go and then i can just tighten up with this it goes out when we're backing up it's pretty much bang on tick over and the speed of the windlass so by the time you get to where you're going you just give it a little bit of forward thrust you stop where you are you nip it up on the windlass there and yeah 
it's usually bang on each time. Um, gauges, depth gauge, and I'm not even going to use the no, 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 whatever it's called. It's a wind windometer or wind gauge for me, I'm sorry to say. Um, the gauge works, or, or did. Um, in fact, that doesn't even come on anymore. Um, it did when we first bought it. I'm not sure if there's something there. No. But either which way, we've, we've got the direction, the arrow at the top, but we haven't got the paddle wheel. So to be honest, because of the age of this auto helm stuff, which is now Raymarine, um, it's not worth trying to pick up a second hand paddle wheel for that. They end up being as much, if not more than say a NASA kit. So if you did want that, and we've been sailing all year without it, it's up to yourself. It's not majorly expensive to replace that. Same with the depth gauge. It works and it may be, or may or may not come off on the video, but the contrast has gone here. So it's a little bit difficult to see at times. You can, but it's not great. So um, again, personally, if and when we lift, or if somebody else does, then I would replace that for what it's worth. There's not a lot of money, to be honest. And that's just the on switch for the windlass there. Obviously compass. Um, we've got a McMurdo EPIRB, which is still in date, but a little bit surplus to requirements at the moment in Greece. Um, but if you did want to buy a boat like this and go further afield, then you know, re-registering, renewing, re-servicing, that would be worthwhile. Um, nameplate just to confirm what boat we do actually have. The Amel from La Rochelle, Euros 41. The number is 198 and the year is 76. And I'm not quite sure what that means. Approbation Commission Nationale Security 328. And I know somebody French will know. Um, and it's, it's licensed uh, for eight to 12 people. In terms of cabin spaces, beds, etc., there's space for eight. I presume the 12 is for uh, how many maybe you can take out on a day trip or something. But anyway, it's licensed for eight to 12. Uh, lockers and storage and what's in. As you can see, this is our shore power. Why did I just leave it so it's hanging with the thing going over? Personally, I don't like drilling holes if I don't need to. So I've left it, that works fine for us. Uh, and there's the shore power or inverter power. There's a plug here for the inverter, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, expansion vessel for coolant. And I'm not going to take them out, but this, this, is, this is basically full of ropes. Whether it's mooring ropes, halyards, towing rope, floating rope, as I said at the beginning of the video, that is all ropes. And again, as liverboards, you don't tend to throw ropes away unless you have to. I did throw one halyard away at the beginning and I'm still gutted I did see. Yeah, I did do. Uh, this becomes a bit more of a junk cupboard, but fishing. Three gas bottles here, the camping gas ones, of which the, the actual bottle goes in here. I'll get the key. One of these bottles typically lasts Rachel and myself six weeks approximately with us cooking every day and also making cups of tea with the kettle off the gas. To fill it here in Greece at the petrol station is four euros, so pretty cheap living. What else have we got? Hose pipes, lots of hose pipes, fins for, uh, for diving, solar shower, which is invaluable in summer. Um, in fact, if anything, a bit too hot in summer, uh, at least in Greece. Um, and knickknacks. Quite deep lockers as well, by the way. So again, lots of storage. It's deceptive how big the boat can be, it, well, is, when you just look at it from the outside on the water. Okay, in here we have tools, man stuff. So I have three toolboxes here. Um, we have compressor down there for the fridge, which isn't working, it needs regassing. Um, under here is a new stainless steel 15 litre calorifier, which works off um, a 500 watt element, which I'll explain, and also uh, hot water coming through the coolant system on the engine. Um, I've installed a diesel heater, which I, you will just have to take my word for it, is under there. Um, what else have we got around here? Lots of spare fiberglass um, slats for the sails. Got a whole collection of them. Okay. Oh, your glasses. And then moving into the engine. Do you want to just maybe stand up there? Okay. 
good thing about annals is they, I believe anyway, from the ones I've seen, they give a good engine access. The access on this is better because the previous owner actually took the generator out where my feet is, or feet are. Um, bit annoying in some ways, but in other ways not, because because we have solar, we have wind, not hooked up, um, and obviously we've got the engine itself. Generators for me are a little bit um, old hat, maybe. I don't know, either which way we don't have it, but the benefit is it gives me lots of space. If the generator was here, uh, you know, to do maintenance would be a lot more difficult. So to be honest, I'm quite glad that it isn't there in that respect. So work I've done, uh, by the way, the mounts are there if you ever did want to put a new generator in, but that's your choice. Uh, we have a new seawater strainer. The original one was actually fine. It's just, I couldn't get the basket. So I had to buy the whole unit. Um, the new hosing coming to this setup here, which I installed. Uh, with this funny little blue takeoff, that's for two reasons. One is I'm planning on putting a deck wash because we have a spare 12 volt pump. I was thinking I'm mounting a deck wash pump here so that when we're bringing the anchor up, we can uh, just hose it down with seawater straight off. The second one was if you turn the um, seacock off um, and then actually attach the hose pipe from shore, then you can flush your engine properly and either leave fresh water in or even take it out depending or put antifreeze after or something if you want. So I thought it was a useful little addition to do that. Uh, we've got, and I believe that's original, um, the exhaust trap, stainless exhaust trap. Um, cooler here has been flushed this summer and also there's a cooler up here behind me, Rach. That one's been flushed. Well, oil and oil filter is going to be changed again for winter now. Um, what else have we done? New sine wave inverter. So it's 1500 watts, which is complete overkill for day to day. But if you want to run a power tool with the battery bank we have, I would run the engine at the same time. But we have 1500 watts there. We've got three new batteries. They're lead, sealed lead acid, 105 amps each. Um, so that gives you what 315 divided by two but one of them is currently a starter the reason I've configured it like this as a starter in two leisure is because I didn't know if we needed more leisure power and to date we haven't but if we were to need more then basically I could then re-rig these into three leisure batteries and just buy another starter battery of any sort for a diesel engine um, spent quite a bit on this which I don't know if you can get to is the Victron Energy blue power charger it's a three output um, battery charger so those two red leads coming out are one for each bank so the starter and the leisure bank and basically every with us being hooked up to shore power every once in a while now it's got its own algorithm um, it will basically diesel sulf desulfate is it uh, the lead acid so basically it stops it sulfating I believe uh, but it's got Victron's well known obviously in the solar energy world etc and it was worth spending the extra on something like that. Um, various new hoses, you can see reds and blues, and you can see this one here, H, the white one. We have another one behind as well. So those are accumulators and or expansion vessels. So one's an accumulator, one's an expansion vessel uh, for the hot water. The other one, so the accumulator is the one that gives the pressure so you don't have to run the motor all the time. Um, actually for this size of configuration it was recommended for that size but I actually think that's a bit too small so the, the idea behind these things is um, when you turn the tap on the motor doesn't have to run continuously straight away um, but you probably get about 10 seconds before then the motor comes on I'd probably if I was going to reinstall one I'd put a bigger one in right the cockpit itself or the gauges <laughs> Uh, tilt gauge there, um, water temperature, engine hours, uh, I think that one's amps is it? Yeah, amps, volts, taco, which isn't working at the moment because since changing the alternator, the takeoff on the Yanmar, I've had a play but I'm not sure that talks with the Yanmar alternator. Um, I need to either speak to the manufacturer again, or not again, but other than just the website. Um, but either which way is fixable. You either buy a Yanmar gauge or you can make this one work. I'm not sure yet. And then we've got oil pressure, oil temperature, um, dash lights, start button key. 
This funky looking squash ball, I'm guessing unless you know what else, uh, you probably won't know, but it's a prop brake. Um, the idea is, when you're sailing under sail, not under power, uh, you can then engage the lock on the shaft and it stops the propeller moving. Mr. Amel, or Amel, um, he puts this squash ball on so you can't lift it whilst the key's in, is the idea. Which is a nice little feature, it's a bit cute. Um, that, I believe, was for the old um, autopilot system, of which we still have the parts, but it's well past its day for repairing. If I was to show you the electric board, and when we do go into the aft cabin, I may as well, uh, it's it's one of those very old circuitry boards with uh, relays etc and it, it's it's gone so for greece we call this boat a greek coastal cruiser if you want to start doing blue water sailing you either get yourself a wind vane and or autopilot if you want as well um, that's your choice uh, that's going to be one of the necessary purchases if you're going to take this blue water sailing of which we know this boat can do um, and then the old-fashioned but functional easy to fix stop cord cable. Uh, this isn't the more modern style where it's electric um, stop start solenoid, it's just a good old fashioned lever. So um, the output is over there which I'm sure Rachel will record in a sec which is about waterline. Um, oh and we have here forward, reverse and this paddle wheel or paddle behind it is what puts it into actual gear but for now I'll just if you give it more, then the glow plugs come on, but in this temperature, they don't, they're not needed. It's a 75 horsepower Volvo Penta. I should have mentioned that when we had the hatch open. Uh, four cylinder, no turbo, 2.4 diesel. I believe it's what they used to put in the old London taxi cabs. Um, they used to put it in a Peugeot 505 or 5005, I think. Um, but they do share it shares a lot of parts um, with uh, the Peugeot uh, old engine, which you can still buy. Uh, well, the parts of. Um, it had, from the previous owner in the last five years, a bottom end rebuild. No paperwork, but Jeff, the chap who just lives down the way in this island, he sailed with a lot of experienced well-known sailors and they all confirm it. I was happy with that. At the end of the day, it's a very old fashioned, old tech, simple diesel engine. Yes, modern Yanmars might be a little bit more fuel efficient with a fancy turbo, but parts are very expensive and cost of running, when it goes wrong, you know, can build up. Good thing about this, it's a, I think a very oversized engine for the size of this boat. Um, our friend has got a new Yanmar of the last few years and I think his is about 40, 50 horsepower and his boat's 17 ton. Ours is 75 and it's, well let's call it 8 ton laden. I think it's 7 on the paper. Um, we, I couldn't give you dimensions of the prop, probably if I was to guesstimate pro approximately that. Uh, I know the anode on the shaft needs doing, which it, it was okay in summer. I looked at it recently when I dived into clean. It's By the time we lift next year, it'll be due to replace. That's no big problem. Um, we did have a, it wasn't quite a medicane, but we had a good 40, 50 knots of wind, we anticipate, or we, we, we think, sorry, um, in a place called Leho Bay. And yeah, it's, there's areas there where the holding isn't good and we were, we found out in a bad spot as was our friend Jim, who's been there many years. Um, and once we realised it was us moving and not the boats next to us, we started the engine and we didn't even have to power forward. We, a bit more than tick over, but we had plenty of power. So it's a good engine. Okay, so we're in the aft cabin now. Um, height here, I should measure it actually, but I'm about 180 and I've got my knees bent. So as you can tell, you're stooping a bit. Um, it's fine when you're lying down or sat down, of course. Um, we've got yeah, quite a lot of storage in the aft there. Um, I'm not going through the boxes, but various bits and pieces, of course, as you accumulate. 
over time. This on the brochure used to actually be one of those camping portaloo toilets, which is now a converted wood storage. If you really fancied one, you could always install one again. Um, on both sides, we have various things. Uh, lots of pulleys, shackles, various bits of stainless, spare winch handles, um, what else? And lots of, I don't know, well, there's the 12 volt pump I was thinking of installing for the seawater and things like harnesses, etc. Uh, this one here I've got out just to show you is the emergency tiller handle. Um, I didn't show it you up on, but it's, it's above this on the deck. There's a square piece there, which that literally just sits on top of and you've got rudder control. Um, these are the cables, cable steering and their original ammo. Um, as you can see, pretty, well, a good size. Um, I can't see that failing, but if it did for some reason, then you've got your emergency tiller. Um, the, I suppose, worst looking bit is that Rach, in her wisdom, took this off and then realised in the heat of summer that it was too hot to actually try and put it back on. Now, by the time I get this video live, I will put a, a link of a company I found in the UK, which would be my preference. So instead of buying the foam backed um, typical headlining, which then I think you have to carpet spray and stuff like that, or contact adhesive, this is like a 3M tape. Um, which is like a double-sided foam sticky tape that you get on various products and you could cut that to shape and then peel off the other side and then just stick standard headlining not the expensive foam bags but the thinner um, single-sided stuff and it should stick to that a lot easier and then you put your wooden strips back on etc um, uh, we've got a couple of anchor balls there which we have been using during summer when we've been at anchor but obviously we're not at the moment and lots of slidey storage bins everywhere we don't need to go through every one a couple here we have the sink here oops we have the sink here um, tap under here these lift up we have a spare alternator uh, an out-of-date fire extinguisher should get that service really um, and then in here we have a lot of paints lotions and potions and let me just get and we usually have this out, but uh, deck wash as well. Just quickly turn that off. Just that there. Um, on this side, this is to make up the one of the double beds, so you can slide out the wood here. Ah, this is normally Doris's job. Does it slide out like that? Oh, it's this one, is it? There you go. Obviously, you can tell how many times I've, I've put the bed up. So, bed comes out like so cushions on there and then in here this one's hoses and yeah hoses and some electrical cable spare and then this one tends to be like fiberglass stuff and scrapers and things like that um, we've got a table it's it took me a while to find this I actually made a table at first but then it was too cumbersome too big too heavy so we bought this nice lightweight euro high aluminium table which during the summer we just have it's the perfect size for the cockpit area um, bum, bum. from the atlantic crossing days lots of wet weather gear uh, depending if you were going to stay in the caribbean or not sorry not caribbean mediterranean um, you probably wouldn't need those but obviously you're not going to throw them away um, ah the previous owner did show me how this works and i cannot remember for the love Love of God, something like a seat which goes in the main cockpit area. It just fits over there, doesn't it? Well, I don't know. When we tried it, I never got it to work. Anyway, there's a, there's an extra seat there, but I've never used it. Carry on. Uh, one of the hose outlets. I put the diesel heater outlet here in the aft. We don't stay in here in winter, but um, I thought it'd be good just to keep it aired and hot whilst we were well, basically in the winter months. Um, we've got one of the um, sockets here. I've installed four of these. But this one isn't wired up yet. If someone comes to buy this, I might have done it by then. I just haven't bothered running the cable to the back yet because we haven't needed to. The idea at one point was to run this as an office uh, for our work, but 
to be honest we tend to sit in the cockpit or in the main saloon area so anyway it's simple enough to wire it up uh, lots of uh, bolts nuts washers lotions potions some of the tools are mine and i'd be taking but it came with plenty of tools as well as uh, when i bought the boat so i'm sure anybody who's buying a boat like this should have some kind of tools anyway of their own um yeah the table here or working desk if we want to call it that with an arm that fits there anything else to add i think that's it isn't it oh and you can take the uh, wind windows out the back which is useful when it does get hot in summer so you can lift that out of the way and obviously we've got that up at the moment but yeah should we move to the uh, main saloon okay um so last part of the tour um it will be the saloon the four peak berth for us uh, and the heads as well so um three steps coming down and if you pass me the camera let me talk you around it we have we leave this open at the moment because we have three of these working. Um, we've got the water heater, which at the moment we have off, we don't leave it on all the time. Um, sockets and B is battery charger. And then we have one spare here. Um, this is the chart table cockpit. And then there's this sort of, not the best storage area in the world, but it seems to be what they provided. Um, and there is the EP Ever Tracer solar charger. We've actually got an old one up here, which I replaced with the EP Ever, and there was one at the back. So they actually had, let me pass you that. Uh, they actually had two old fashioned PWM controllers, these cheap things. So I've replaced it with an MPPT, which combines it. Um, this is the original board with a slight modification here, but by the previous owner. Uh, this switches the inverter on and off. Uh, diesel heater on and off by a switch there and then you can control it with the remote control or just set it here um, I installed this this is shore power voltage at the moment and it also if you switch switch over the cables to inverter then it will give you inverter power as well and the useful thing is the amp straw just to see how things are what's pulling what um, let me see I've got it wired under SSB here but we have a GPS radio VHF uh, this is an external display for the EP Ever Tracer, uh, just so you can, obviously it's a bit of a stretch to look down there, so that just tells us the ins and the outs. And I've got a smart gauge uh, battery monitor, which gives us both banks of batteries. Um, and just tell, They'll always be at full anyway, because we have, while we're on shore power, the Victron charger at the moment. Uh, typical chart table, lift up for probably maps, if that's where you're gonna put them. Table of knickknacks. Down here used to be um, used to be the original fridge. I don't know what happened. I presumed it stopped working, and at some point somebody made it storage, unfortunately. So this fridge, without a new door, is not going to be a fridge. It's storage. Um, however, um, we have this over here, which was the freezer, which has been re well. It, I believe the plate that's in there is a fridge one now, so if you like, this is a top-loading fridge. And they do generally say that a top-loading fridge is more economical than a side-loading one, because obviously the cool air sinks and it doesn't all fall out. Um, right, what do we have around here? Dinner for tonight. This is our tablet uh, for navigation and movies at night, but it's Navionics. Um, it's about £23. We have uh all of the mediterranean maps let me just double check we have anchor alarms on as well which is very useful to have let me just close that uh Navali, which tells you harbors and so on obviously you get this on your phone as well um marine radar is it's an internet thing so it's only if you've got data and internet going at the time but it will i think it's ais reading so if we don't have ais on this boat but i think that is like the internet version of ais it will as long as you connect it to the web it will tell you um what else have we got um gimbal stove which i think is probably fairly common on nearly every boat with the exception of trailer sailors which have the little portable ones Maybe, I don't know. Many animals have the old ones still. Oh, do they? Mm. Oh, well, I'll stand corrected on that one. Uh, the little Amalesque feature, these <laughs> little plastic, whatever you want to call them. But 
uh, to stop the drawer flying over in bad weather. Uh, foot pump, we have fresh water pump there. There's a seawater pump here, which I actually bought the new kit for. I just haven't reinstalled it because I'm not sure if I want to be washing plates in seawater. In the Mediterranean, we don't need to. We're always close to enough water sources anyway. Crossing the Atlantic, yeah, probably. Um, but it's there, it's rebuilt, it's ready to be refit. I just don't know if I want it, to be honest. Um, what else, we've got pedal bin down here. Um, I'll open them for the sake of it, but your usual under the sink storage, which as you can see is a bit of a bomb site, <laughs> like probably most for, uh, sorry, kitchen sinks at home. Um, we have storage in here for spices and so on, even though we've got little spice racks up here. Uh, behind here is actually two more lockers, uh, which go behind. Even for me, I'm not particularly tall, but I'm not particularly short. They're a bit of a stretch to get down. So we've blocked this off. Um, and we've got, if you can just about see there, the hot pipe coming down. Well, it will be hot when the diesel heater's on. It comes down there and then it spits out on that plate there. Um, so I'm not, I don't think anybody ever would, but you can just look, slip, um, slip this off um, and the, the covers are still there to be used if you wanted to use them for extra storage, maybe emergency something. But to be honest, there's so much storage anyway. Um, Cutlery drawers, knick-knack drawers, pots, pans, under here. Um, i trying to think if there's anything. We have a bag of flags, which is from the days gone by. We've got another one of the plates here, which I really should get round to wiring up from the ring main, uh, but we haven't done that one yet either. But instead, I've got one of the double sockets here, and one of the double sockets on the chart table. At the moment, those are the two that I've wired up. I'll probably get around to wiring this one up this winter because we're gonna be sat in here a lot working anyway, and it just saves having wires crossing about. Um, barometer, um, temperature and humidity, access to bilges, etc. Um, this one here. Pipe from the shower and hose pipes going up to the shower and well, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, sink up there. Down here. In fact, somebody asked me about the bills here, so. Ah, yeah. Um, okay, so I've just taken the, uh, the stairs way over there. Um, We've got uh, a Vetus battery switch, uh, which is um, one, two, both and off. It's the make the circuit before break the circuit time, which I think probably every switch is up these days on the market, but I was reading before buying this um, that it was a problem in the olden days. Uh, sight glass window, this is an enamel feature. Um, so instead of having an electronic gauge, it's, it's the sight glass window. Um, breaker for the windlass. Manual bilge pump here with handle and another side glass window because there's two tanks. So we tend to run just on this uh, this tank here, which is 100 litres, um, which I prefer. I'd rather put more fuel through one tank than le well the same fuel, but not enough of it through two tanks, if you know what I mean. Um, here. So I've put, not everyone agrees with this, maybe they do, don't, but this pipe here is an outlet for um, the two tanks. So this is one of the taps, this is the other tap for the two tanks. Um, so as it comes out, it goes into this filter here, which I can see nice and clearly, uh, and it's a third filter. Uh, goes into the primary pump, goes back into the lift pump, into the secondary and up. Uh, that is the new Yamaha alternator, or new this summertime, or I think probably actually earlier in summer, but um, and then there's actually not easy to see maybe, but two taps up here. Um, they're your return taps, which you can turn off as well. So as you may and may not know, as the fuel goes into the engine and round, it then gets put back into the tank and then back again. So you could divert, you could fill up one tank or vice versa if you wanted to. Um, build is down there. I would say pretty clean. Um, at some point it may have had a, well, it probably did put a bit of oil in there once upon a time when they had the, um, when they did the rebuild, but anyway, it's, I would say a pretty clean engine. 
Um, right, so stairs here. We have more storage here. Um, hey, everyone's going to collect their own. Lots of storage. Um, there's drinks holders and things like that, but obviously over time you're going to have your own storage. Um, moving into the heads. Uh, so we have, this is where we actually put our solar shower through during summer. Um, I'm 180-ish and this must be around 185 something with this down maybe even 190. Um, it's the same with the saloon, you've got around two meters headroom there. So for those who are tall, you should have enough room unless you're very, very tall. Um, going around here, sink, a shower head that comes out, um, the uh, Jabsco toilet, storage, etc. Oh, and in here as well, sorry to make you dizzy. We have yeah, a bit more storage there as well. Not that we use a lot of coats over here generally. And finally, moving to the four peak, um, V berth, and you can move this out of the way, which then goes in that forward slot there, if you can see, and then obviously storage everywhere. And that's the windless remote uh, you saw earlier on, which I pulled out and on the deck. So, um, I think, I think that concludes the tour. Uh, I just thought I would show you the tender, as I said at the beginning, however, um, yeah, this is us for winter, Nikiana in Greece, Lefkada. It's not a bad old place to be. Obviously very different once the winds come in, but we have, most of these are charter boats. Um, and they very kindly let us use two of their lazy lines, which they're not using for whatever reason, which is very nice of them. So, uh, uh, I hope there's a bit of a, a bonus to them. We've got their phone number, so if there's any problems, which hopefully there isn't, but hey, it's boats. Uh, if anything happens, we can obviously give them a call. Uh, so helping people out. Um, we have fishing boats here. There's a couple of wrecks as well, which is interesting. Um, where was it? Don't know if that will come out in a video, but <laughs> some sunken old, presumably wooden f Greek fishing boat. And this wooden one here with the old red, oh, I forget the make of those now. Um, uh, Rigiflex, I think it is, a UK make. Um, yeah, that's waiting to go as well at some point. And when I say go, I mean go under, unfortunately. Anyway, so if you can see a bit of yellow and blue, this is what we call the gypsy slipper uh, because of the shape. So this is our Tinker. It's a Tinker Traveller or Tinker Tailor. Let me just pull to check. Um, I'm trying to see. Anyway, uh, Rach, she doesn't like it. However, I do. It's an absolute classic. In its day, it was and probably still is because there's a cover which goes over it, which uh, actually then gives it a life raft rating, believe it or not. It's Hyperlon. I know it looks very tired, but it's Hyperlon and it's double walled. So you've got an inner and an outer on both tubes and it's extremely stable. Um, in the Medicaid, in some of the high winds we've had during summer, people have had tenders left on the back with um, their, their motors, their engines attached, and they flipped over. Um, reason we've left it here instead of taking it out is if, if the winds here in Nikiana come in uh, from the east, it won't be pleasurable. The boats, I believe, stay here all winter, uh, but they're not living on them. So it might be if something comes in, we'll take the tender with us and go and ride it out somewhere nicer. Um, one of the tubes, I think it is this one, is a bit soft. So about once a week, we have to pump it up or once every two weeks or so. Uh, well, that's no great shakes. And you can see uh, these are wooden slats. You can see where they need sanding. It needs taking out, sanding and painting, basically. Um, and that little, what looks like a, a bung, is where you put the sail. And the sail attaches to these hoops and at the fore. And yeah, it's a good bit of fun. You've got a dagger board and there's a tiller which goes on the rear. It's a good bit of fun. It's not fast, but it's extremely safe for children. Okay, so I hope you uh, enjoyed our video today uh, of Mahi Mahi. 
um, obviously it's not a professional video the sailing couples that do a much better job than we'll do but um, we're not doing this for a living we're just trying to help paint a picture for those that will probably have to travel further than uh, just the islands here to come see the boat so i hope it's been useful whether you buy the boat or not or you just wanted to see what enamel looks like at least ours um, I just want to cover a few points and a few questions that we continuously get. Um, so the lining in the aft cabin, I mentioned a company in the UK and it's called Hawk House Limited. I'll put the link at the bottom. Uh, they do this 3M tape that you can cut to shape, stick up and cut your lining to shape, peel it off, pop it on. Um, have a look at it and see if it's for you, uh, whether it's for this boat or another. Uh, it looks pretty good. Um, auto helm, or should I say autopilot. This was installed on the boat when we purchased it. Uh, we have spare relays. It was pa um, connected to power and the, the colours here. Hello, Sushi. Um, we couldn't get it to work. Maybe somebody who's a bit more talented with electronics can do, but it's there with the motor, etc. It was just beyond me. Number three, survey. Uh, no, we didn't get it surveyed. Uh, I was quite happy with the fact that the guy who bought it on the hard in the Caribbean, refitted it, sailed it across the Atlantic with himself and some experienced sailors and then lived on it for four to five years. We then purchased it. I did my own survey whilst it was in the water and I also, when we did our test sail, I surveyed the hull in the water. Um, if you wish to get a professional survey, um, there are many boatyards here, but with COVID restrictions, they won't be allowing, I think, uh, any boats to come in and be lifted at this point. I might be wrong, but if interested, come back to us. I can give you names and numbers and you can do your own research there. Um, manuals, maps and paperwork, we have lots of, maybe not 44 years worth, although some of the paperwork is definitely from 44 years ago, which is quite historic and impressive to see. The original brochure. The original brochure, which we were part through, part way through laminating, but then we ran out of the sheets and we don't know where to buy the sheets. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of history there. Um, we have got some of the manuals, which as in time things get replaced, obviously it's probably just worth throwing them away, but we have got, we have got quite a lot. Um, for those who do or do not know, that is the Greek Dekpa, or what used to be. Uh, we purchased it in January this year for 50 euros, and it was supposed to last us five years. It lasted us one month before they then kiboshed and cancelled the uh, Dekpa. It's now been replaced with a thing called cruising tax, of which our boat has to pay 35 euros a month within Greek waters, which is a good price. Um, if you go over slightly bigger than ours, then you're talking 100 something euros per month that you're in the waters. So just bear that in mind if you buy a slightly bigger or much bigger boat. Is that only if you're moving? Only if you're moving, sorry. Yeah, mm. so whilst we're in the harbour over there, we're not paying for it. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, apologies for the many repeats and storage. I think I mentioned too many times, but as I said, it's not a professional video. Um, and I th oh, insurance, I think is the last thing there. Insurance. So we went with the Greek insurance company, cost us 130 euros for the year, which was third party. Uh, but the main thing I was covering, I was more concerned with is pollution. So if you got damaged or you damaged someone and it ended up on your insurance for whatever reason, um, you have to make sure that you're covered for pollution in Greek waters. I spoke with some UK insurers and I wasn't getting a good feeling off a few of them. So in the end, I decided to go with a Greek company. At the end of the day, if a Greek insurer doesn't deliver pollution insurance, I would like to think that they're in more trouble than we are. So I would, I would imagine they adhere to what they say. Um, so last but not least, it's 20,000 euros. And I think, or we think, it's a fantastic uh, liverboard for the money. We've been on it since August last year. And with COVID, we'll probably be on it till April, May, June next year. Um, if you want, if you're handy with the tools and you want to get stuck in and you don't want to spend a fortune on your first boat, this is why we bought it. We could have bought a much more expensive boat but didn't want to because it's like driving a new car. It's very difficult to fix it on the roadside when you've never looked at it beforehand. And there's nothing more cruel than the sea if it wants to be. So the more you know your boat, the safer it is for yourself, not only in your hands, your mind, but for the money, yeah, it's worth considering. And it's one of the best price animals on the market, I think it's fair to say. Thank you for watching.